Welcome to Piano Side Chat. I'm Reverend Stephanie Allsweet at St. Paul Benson. We are a reconciling United Methodist congregation in one of Omaha's historic neighborhoods. I'm joined today by my colleague, Reverend Jerry Brabeck, our Minister of Worship, and Anna and Yuroslav on the violin. We are so glad that you've joined us today for the fourth Sunday in Advent. Watch and wait for Christ's coming. Light candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, remembering the promises of God with prayer. We light this candle in hope. We light this candle for peace. We light this candle for joy. We light this candle for love. Hear the word of the Lord drawn from Micah. As for you, Bethlehem of Ephrathah, Though you are the least significant of Judah's forces, one who is to be a ruler of Israel on my behalf will come out from you. His origin is from remote times, from ancient days. Therefore, he will give them up until the time when she who is in labor gives birth. The rest of his kin will return to the people of Israel. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. They will dwell secure, because he will surely become great throughout the earth. He will become one of peace. Gentle join me in prayer. We give thanks um, for a God who is with us every day, not just on Sundays or in those moments when we are intentionally in prayer. And I know I give thanks that any thought, any worry, any joy becomes a prayer in our lives of faith. Loving God, we lift up our faith community today, people that we have met and people that we have not met, the friends that we know as our piano side worshipers, people that we find inside the building of St. Paul and those we encounter during the week. We pray for those who are grieving that they might find rest, courage, and release from pain. 
We pray for those who are on journeys of healing, that they might find their way and have companionship on that journey. We pray for those for whom holidays are difficult for any number of reasons and pray that your love might be a soothing balm. For travelers, we pray for safety. For those whose lives have been turned upside down and sideways and torn apart by odd winter storms, we pray for rest, for comfort, for new ways in the midst of difficulty. We also celebrate today times of renewal, times of reunion, times of breakthroughs in relationships, as well as people with birthdays in the midst of holidays, anniversaries in the midst of holidays, people for whom the closing of the year brings a breath of relief or perhaps a fresh start for all of these. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Nebraska. I know I think of our varied weather patterns and the folks in the western part of the state who have had tremendous snow and by the time this recording is uploaded, perhaps we in Omaha will have had a great deal of wind. For that diversity, we give thanks and attempt to remember to hold one another in prayer. We give thanks and pray for wisdom for our lawmakers and for all of those who might be rushing or waiting or hastening or delaying, God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of this nation that we might remember um, our faith life in the midst of rituals and seasons, that we might remember one another as siblings, and that as we attempt to address problems that are heavy and large, we might remember that we each carry with us the light of faith, the peace of, the peace of joy that we find in the Christmas story. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For the global community, we offer prayers. We know that so many faith groups have significant celebrations um, and holidays and markers of time in this season. We lift them up, all of them, for safe um, markations, demarcations of these periods of time and seasons. We remember our siblings who cross all kinds of boundaries, geographic, social, and economic, and pray that we might be able to share with one another and welcome one another as we travel through this life together. God of mercy, hear our prayer. And with these significant storms that we have seen in the middle of the U.S. and to our south, we pray that we might be able to work to end global climate change, that we might protect this earth as the earth has cared for us. God of mercy, hear our prayer. As Christmas cards arrive, we remember all the saints who've gone before us, some of whom are in the photographs of Christmas's past, some of whose stories we tell each year at Christmas. We give thanks for their living witness, even in this day, so that in the present moment, we might look to the future with hope. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We gather these prayers together in the name of Christ, the Emmanuel, as we say his prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. Our lectionary today recounts the Song of Mary that the ancient church began to call the Magnificat and which we still hear today. So, from the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to Luke, reading from the first chapter and beginning with the 46th verse, And Mary sang, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. This is the word of life. Thanks be to God. Our scriptures today um, highlight wise, wise women. Um, and I, I think that's important. And I've got one more scripture to read. Um, but, but to recap, we've heard from the prophet Micah during the Advent candle lighting, um, talking about Bethlehem, and then talking about um, she who is in labor, who has brought forth. I mean, that's clearly a, a feminine image, uh, clearly that notion of the creative energy that women bring, not just to scriptures, but to the faith tradition and to the world. Jerry read for us from the Gospel of Luke, a scripture that we know is the Magnificat because of that word. Um, we hear Mary say, my soul magnifies the Lord. And so here is this young woman, woman giving her voice to this gospel um, with his poetry, rejoicing in her call as the mother of Jesus. Um, the poetry is, is beautiful. It's, of course, an ancient poem. It's scripture. Um, and it is um, very clearly a woman who is speaking and not just offering prophetic words, but prophetic words naming her own calling and is in that way incredibly significant. I'd like to read the passage that comes immediately before that. And this is um, the story of Mary and Elizabeth. So this is from Luke uh, in the first chapter, but starting at the 39th verse. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Now, you know, Elizabeth, that's the mother of John. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. So here we have these women greeting one another and Elizabeth um, in her own words is a prophet as well, naming and claiming Mary as the mother of God, naming and claiming Jesus in the womb. And then this then is followed by Mary's words 
um, sharing her calling and God's um, Holy Spirit being upon her. When Mary talks, the poetry that she articulates isn't just about her call. She talks about the impact that the birth of her child will have on the world. She talks about the upheaval that will happen, how the, the lowly will be lifted, how the hungry will be filled, how um, we will become servants of one another. And so the prophetic vision is not just for herself and her family, but for all, all people. It's this larger vision for all people. These are incredible words. Um, and we find them on this Sunday in our scriptures before Christmas. They're the very last scriptures before we hear in our churches the story of the, the birth of Jesus. Later, not too far along, we'll hear the story of more wise people, wise men. I like to say wise ones because maybe there was a woman with them. But this week, this week is the week for the wise women. Sometimes I, I worry that we are still spending too much time disregarding the wisdom of women and children. Um, I worry that we spend too much time with stereotypes of women, whether it be jokes about stereotypical roles, jokes about wives, jokes about cheerleaders, jokes about women with a certain build or a certain height or a certain color of hair. And I worry that we haven't yet learned from the scriptures, from our lives, that women's wisdom is to be cherished just as much as that of men and just as much as that of people whose gender might be either harder to discern or might be somewhere in between or on a different part of the axis. Children also have wisdom and will hear stories of Jesus' wisdom as a child in a few weeks as well. I let my mind wander sometimes thinking about all the times women have offered their wisdom to me in my life. Sometimes that wisdom has been very obvious. Sometimes that wisdom comes from a woman who tells me, I am being wise and you need to listen. Other times that wisdom might be hidden because the world around us doesn't want us to listen to the wisdom of women. That also happens with children and teenagers sometimes. It happens to other people who are marginalized, people of color, sometimes people whose bodies don't work in the ways that we assume that they should. Sometimes people's wisdom is not listened to. And yet in the scripture, we hear the wisdom of women, people who are marginalized in their communities, their wisdom comes to the forefront of the scriptures. And when their wisdom is uttered, what we hear is a preference for those who are on the margins. We hear a preference for the call of those who might have been otherwise ignored. This week, I hope to be intentional, looking, listening, watching for the voices of the poets in my life who might otherwise be ignored. On my route home from church, um, I, take, I take an indirect route home. I choose a route that has fewer stop signs and avoids a road here in Omaha that's called Saddle Creek. If you live in Omaha, you might understand why I avoid Saddle Creek. It is quick moving. 
it has several curves, and you could pretend you're a NASCAR driver. If one looks closely in the morning on Saddle Creek, one might see a number of bits of glass from where other vehicles have been rear-ended the night before. This is why I choose to not travel via Saddle Creek. So the route I take a little bit more to the north, a little bit less traveled, a little bit slower and a little bit longer, takes me to a T intersection. The light is usually red for a good amount of time while I sit at that T intersection. And I've noticed for a few weeks that there was spray paint on the fence ahead of me. I will admit I haven't taken the time always to read the spray paint. Once I allowed myself to read, I realized I had been missing out on a prophetic voice in the neighborhood. The spray paint is green. It is somewhere between neon and Kelly green. And the words that are spelled out with a pretty good amount of care say this, art is life. I'm sad I didn't read it the first time I drove by. I think I assumed that it was something messy and instead now I see that a prophet has been among us reminding me on my drive home to look for art because art is life and it sometimes shows up in unexpected places. The art that is life might show up in a young woman's poetry that we find in the Gospel of Luke. The art that is life might show up in a neighbor child explaining to us why they like to collect rocks. The art that is life might be somebody that we encounter at the grocery store who just wants to tell us a story about the best way to use tomatoes and limes to make salsa. Art is life. And we hear in the Gospel of Luke that we are called to listen to the wisdom of women and to people from the margins who know how to communicate with us in different ways about truth in the world around us. In these scriptures, that truth is a calling. It is a prophecy. It is a naming and claiming of God's word in the world revealed by people who would be marginalized, but instead have the courage to speak God's word in the world. On my route home, some unnamed artist had the courage to perhaps break the law, but also to paint a message to remind me to be on the lookout for art in the world around me so that I might look for life in the midst of our neighborhoods. This week, how is it that we will look to the margins for God's truth? How is it that we will discern God's wisdom from prophets that come from unlikely places? How is it that we too will announce the life that we find in God's magnificent creation. This is the quest. This is the journey. This is the joy as we approach Christmas with Mary and Elizabeth, the wise women.
Thank you for joining us for another Piano Side Chat. I want to let you know that our plan for Christmas Eve is that we will live stream on our YouTube channel our 7.30 p.m. service. That means that all of you Piano Side friends can find that service later or live on our YouTube channel. We have not forgotten you. And we look forward to seeing you every week right here on Piano Side.